What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here and today I wanna to answer one of the most highly requested questions that I get. I wanna talk about what should you pay for your AR-15. So today we have a couple AR-15s sat out here and about, I think we have five of them out here today, five of mine, of different varying prices and quality and I wanna talk about what price they are what features you should expect for that particular price line. So first we'll talk about the cheapest AR-15 that I own and one of the cheapest AR-15s I think on the market may be the cheapest. This is the ATI Omni and it is right around $300. Now this is certainly an entry level AR-15 but if you've seen any of my previous reviews I would avoid this for a couple of reasons but even still it represents kind of that $300 to $500 price range. And even though this may not be the brand I would recommend, there are other brands like maybe the Smith & Wesson M&P Sport that kind of hover around that price range that have similar features that I want to talk about. So first, let's address the ATI Omni. Dead trigger. The gun itself is $300 and you get a very low quality Air 15 for that price tag because it's a very low price. And because of that you get a polymer upper and lower receiver. I would stay away from that. I would get a metal receiver of some kind, whether it be billet aluminum or whatever uh, hot fancy thing you want to go with. The reason why I would stay away from the American Tactical is because I had a lot of pretty serious reliability and parts breakage issues right away, right out of the box. So I had to change the bolt in order to get this particular rifle to work. I had to change it to a BCM bolt because the bolt was not sized correctly to even fit in the star chamber correctly. So I was having a lot of problems with that. Also the uh, gas block right from the factory was very loose and I had to realign and tighten that because even on camera I was having gas issues. So beyond the actual operating system of the really cheap AR-15, some of the features you can expect for the $300 to $500 price tag, and again, guns like the M&P Sport won't have those issues. I've had uh, two of them in the past, and both of them ran really well. There are others as well. But you're going to expect a standard, just regular old stock. Not bad, not good either, but it is collapsible, and you can definitely work with it. One of the reasons why I would suggest a collapsible stock over something like a M16A1, which I can roll some footage in right now, is that if you have smaller statured people in your house, let's say your daughter or son, you want to teach them to go shooting someday, or maybe your wife wants to use this for a home defense gun or whatever it may be, uh, a, a adjustable length of pull is a real benefit to people, especially if you're going to shoot prone, you might want the stock out, and if you're going to shoot standing up, you're going to want it maybe kind of in the middle, and if you're one of those guys who use body armor or uh, LBE of some kind for your daily job, or you just want to go out and train and play around with it, you know, you can put the stock in and that makes it more comfortable. A standard mil spec uh, grip as well which is one of the least comfortable grips of all time especially if it's big old mitts like me but not something you can't work around certainly usable you're gonna have a one-sided safety here uh, somebody like my wife who is left-handed really likes an ambi safety because you know it's easier to flip off this side although again doable you're gonna have a rack grade mil spec trigger now honestly for me you really have to start getting into the thousand to fifteen hundred dollar range to start getting guns off the rack with more uh, customized triggers and things like that. We'll talk about that later. But as far as mil spec trigger goes, that's pretty good to go. You're going to get a standard handguard as well that doesn't allow you to mount any accessories, and that is a one of the probably one of the biggest cons of the lower priced AR-15s, in my personal opinion, because you're going to want something like a weapon light on it to uh, use it for home defense or use it for law enforcement use or military use. Any use you can really think of for an AR-15 that's serious use, you're gonna want some sort of handguard, whether that be a short quad rail, long quad rail, M-lock rail, key mod rail. We're gonna show you all those on the table here in a second because I've got them all on the table. Except for a quad rail, I guess, but you get the point. Quad rail is pretty easy. It just has four rails on each side. Quad rail, huh? And it probably won't come with any sights. This one didn't. It did come with a, a, a sight block on top of the gas block, which is kind of nice because you can put flip up sights on it to get them out of way of your optic. And an optic is something I would recommend for your budget AR. Even if you buy a $300 AR, nowadays there's stuff like the Bushnell TRS-25 or the Primary Arms Microdot that are fairly reliable, especially for the price tag. They're around $100. And it's probably going to come with a 16 inch barrel and it's going to come with a uh, A2 flash hider of some type because these are extremely cheap and actually they're actually pretty usable as well. Even on some guns that I have that are over $2,000 they still run some type of A2 flash hider because they're kind of a do-it-all uh, do uh, muzzle device. They don't mitigate recoil very much but they do compensate a little bit because the ports are on the top and they do mitigate a little bit of flash and they don't cause a lot of blast to the shooters around you. So they are pretty useful even though they come 
come on just about every AR-15 on the market. Now, one thing you can expect as far as reliability and accuracy goes when it comes to a gun that's 300 to 500, is you're gonna expect probably the lowest on the AR-15 market. Now, the good news about AR-15s is they're inherently very accurate, probably the most accurate combat rifle ever made. So you're still gonna be expecting somewhere between it depends on what brand, but you're gonna expect somewhere between five and two MOA for even a $300 to $500 AR-15. So accuracy, unless you're shooting long range competitions or you're shooting a three gun competition or something like that, something beyond 100 yards, accuracy, even for a rack grade cheap AR-15, is not gonna be a horrible issue. What you're really gonna run into is parts and quality control, and then you're gonna run into reliability issues, which we did on this particular rifle. So because of that, I would aim above the 500 dollar mark and I would get you into a gun like this. This is the Radical Firearms Air 15. Full disclosure, they did send me this gun, but I get guns sent to me all the time, and it won't change my opinion. And this doesn't represent the Radical Firearms, it represents a different tier of Air 15. So with this gun, I'm gonna be talking about the $500 to $1,000 range. So your Colts are gonna fit in here, uh, your Radical Firearms are gonna fit in here, any number of quality Air 15, SIG is gonna fit in here, and this is the category that I think most of you are gonna fit in very comfortably. What this is gonna bring to you over something like the ATI, over something like some of the cheaper uh, Air 15s, is gonna bring you an extra level of reliability because the parts are gonna be made of higher quality. They're gonna be all mil spec for the most part, which is important because mil spec helps you you know, design the whole system together. You don't wanna stack tolerances, have different part size here, different part size here, and then eventually the whole system is just a mess. Also, you're gonna get quality materials, like you're gonna get aluminum, some type of aluminum receiver, which is really important, and you're gonna get features like an M-Lock rail or a key mod rail or a quad rail. And like I said before, that allows you to easily mount lights and vertical grips and uh, whatever you want to put up here, whatever your, fan, your, you know, a toaster to put your toaster strudel in and you can put uh, flip up sights or anything like that you want. And only for a little bit more money, you're gonna be expecting a rifle that's gonna have a lot longer life as well. So if this rifle goes, you know, this rifle actually went about 50 rounds before parts breakage. But let's say you get a Smith & Wesson MMP or something like that, you're gonna get a little more quality. But guns of this tier are gonna get an even longer life and an even longer bare life as well before you're gonna have to change parts. And you're gonna have a higher percentage of accuracy. Let's say an MMP, or a higher level of reliability, sorry. So let's say the MMP is 99% reliable. This is gonna be 99.9% .9 reliable. So. With a $500 to $1,000 rifle, this is really what I would suggest for almost everybody. It's gonna come with a standard gas block, which is fine. It's gonna come with a standard barrel, a uh, standard muzzle brake, most likely an M-Lock or key mod rail. You're gonna have an all aluminum receiver. This one actually came with a more vertical uh, pistol grip, which is really ergonomic, especially if you have the stock pushed all the way in. It came with this Mission First Tactical stock, which is much more comfortable than this, and it's got a much more secure locking system. So when you're gonna shoot the rifle, it's not gonna be rattling around a little bit, and that's just gonna be one less thing you're gonna have to worry about when you're going to be shooting at long distance or shooting up close quickly. This also came with an ambidextrous safety for you lefties out there, which is a really big plus in my opinion. And it also came with a more textured bolt release and a more textured magazine release, which is a big plus. And a bolt made of a stronger and more durable material than something like the $300 AR-15. So all around, the probably the biggest step up in the AR-15 market is under 500 to over 500. I would really suggest you go somewhere between 500 and $1,000 for the features that I talked about. You're gonna get a little boost in accuracy as well, but again, not much. I mean, people will talk about it, maybe it's an MOA, but in reality, you're gonna talk about a hunting situation, a military law enforcement situation, or a home defense situation. One minute of angle is really, most of the time, not gonna make or break the situation. A competitive situation, maybe, but most likely that's, that's not gonna be an issue and not something that I would really worry about when I'm purchasing a gun, I would really worry about more quality control, quality of parts, and reliability, and features of the firearm. Now we'll move into something like the BCM. Now this is a BCM uh, 14, or this is a BCM 16 inch with a uh, compensator. Now this gun came with a key mod rail back when key mod was the coolest thing. 
and that's pretty cool. It's got the KMR rail. It's got a really good solid mounting system. So some of the other key mod M lock or even quad rails on the market, they don't have quite the sturdy mounting system that some of the higher end rifles have like, like the BCM. I mean, you could twist this as long as you want. It's not going to go anywhere and it won't change the point of aim of your iron sights and it won't mess with any D ball or any laser or anything like that you're going to have up there, which is a big plus also. This has a vertical grip and it has a uh, compensator on it. I forget what this is exactly called. It's like the BCM comp of some kind. And it comes with a, again, an even higher quality of furniture set than the previous set did. Now, this is the tier that I like to stick in for the most part. I like BCM, Daniel Defense, companies like that who make a totally rock solid gun. Now imagine a gun like this, where you get all the same features basically from each gun. So that's why I said a step up from a thousand to a $1,500 gun isn't kind of as dramatic, but you get a rock solid, absolutely reliable gun. I mean, guns like BCM, for example, have gone 60,000 rounds with minimal issues. So if you want the same features as the previous, but you want it to be rock solid reliable, and you want it to be probably around two MOA, something like that, one and a half MOA, uh, BCM is a really good way to go. Also, you're gonna be getting in a higher, higher quality materials, so a BCM is gonna be lighter weight. Again, just more quality parts on a gun like this. Now we can move up to this what I would consider the $1,500 to $2,000 range. And this is, not a, uh, this is not a stock rifle. This is actually a Frankenstein gun built by me. But I wanted to talk about some of the advantages that maybe this has over my standard BCM. Because this is a BCM. It's a BCM barrel with a BCM upper receiver. But in turn, it has a Cryptek Coatings low mass bolt carrier. And it has a whole bunch of slick, super fast options that I wanted to mention on a higher tier rifle. So first off, it's got a better stock. This is a fab defense stock, and in my opinion, one of the best. It has more of a cheek weld. It's very sturdy, very reliable. I got a video on this if you want to see it. It's got the Myad grip. This is an adjustable grip, so you can adjust the uh, the size of the grip for your particular hand. This has a Geisley uh, two-stage trigger in it. Geisley makes some of the best custom triggers on the market because not only are they very smooth and very accurate, but they're also very, very reliable. They don't change the uh, mechanics much from the standard mil spec triggers, so you're not gonna get any issues in reliability that you would with some of the really high-end custom triggers. Iron sights are top notch. These are Magpul uh, Embus Pro sights. So instead of, you didn't see any flip up sights on the market, but these are not going to come with any plastic or any cheap sights. These are going to be absolutely 100% bomb proof and reliable. So whenever you flip them up, you know, because people have red dots use their flip up sights like once every 14 years. So when you do need them, they will be there for you. Some of the real advantage of this rifle over that one though is it's gonna be lighter weight and it's just gonna be more customizable to you. So this has a, uh, I forget what type of material the lower, but this is a 2A armament uh, Baleos light. So the lower is gonna be about six ounces less, something like that, four ounces less. And the rail is from V7s and the rail is gonna do the exact same thing as the BCM, but it's gonna do it for less weight. It has a adjustable Adams arms, I think, gas block. So what that's gonna do in conjunction with the low mass bolt carrier that I talked about is it's going to lower the recoil because you can adjust the amount of gas just to how much you need. To run that particular ammunition. If you're on a higher pressure ammunition, you take an Allen wrench, turn it up or turn it down as needed. So if you're gonna run a suppressor on here, that's a really nice feature. Also that, so you have less gas coming through the platform into the shoulders. You're gonna have less recoil, less muzzle flip. Add to that a lower weight bolt carrier that is less mass going backward as well. So you're gonna have less recoil, plus it's gonna be less weight for the overall platform. So basically what you're gonna get with a $1,500 to $2,000 tier is you're gonna get a little bit less recoil well, you're gonna get a little bit more accuracy because the barrel is going to be a little bit more superior. So maybe 1.5, even one MOA. I have sub MOA uh, barrels that we're gonna talk about here in a second. And you're gonna get a lot less weight. And an advantage to a lot less weight is no matter how strong you are, no matter how much you work out, less weight's always gonna be better. So it's gonna be easier to hold up for longer periods of time. 
most people think about less weight like they think about carrying the rifle like it's slung. What I think about with less weight with a rifle is I think about how long I'm going to have to hold this rifle up and how quickly I'm going to be able to transition from target to target. So in both those scenarios, less weight, especially up front, is going to be better. Also, this is a superior muzzle device, and you've seen the other ones. This is a uh, BG Gamma. So this is actually a, a brake, compensator, and flash hider combo. It does a really, really good job at mitigating the recoil. I also have a cage to put over this to mitigate the blast problems if I go to a uh, rifle class or something like that. Now we're going to get in the highest tier. This is my three gun Air 15. And some of the things that it has over some of the previous ones, again, it has the Baleos light lower, which I really like, but it also has the Baleos light matched upper. So it's a little bit less weight there too. They're matched together. So all of this gun is designed to be super lightweight and it's designed to be super accurate, super reliable with super low recoil. So this is, the, this is my super high speed, low drag build basically. So it's really, really light for what it is. It's lighter than every other rifle on the table, even though it has a really thick barrel and it has an optic. This comes in at right around, I think, without the optic, somewhere around 5.7 pounds, something like that. So very light, easy to transition, easy to pick up a maneuver, easy to carry all day. It comes with a proof research barrel, incredibly expensive, and in my opinion, a little overpriced for what you get. Basically, you're gonna get a gun that dissipates heat really well. It's a carbon fiber wrap barrel. It's hard to kind of see in there. Under one MOA, extremely accurate and it's very light also since it's a very thick barrel but it is carbon fiber carbon fiber is much lighter than metal it has a uh no that you don't see every day the gator driving down the highway anyway so it has a titanium gas block in it from slr rifle works what does that give you it gives you the same adjustments as the previous but again lighter weight i think it's somewhere around one ounce it's ridiculous it feels like it's not even on the gun i have a v7's improved uh a uh, gas tube here. Not really sure what that does, but I bought a bunch of parts from V7s and eh, threw it on there anyway. Lantac Dragon muzzle brake, crazy amounts of blast in comparison to all the other muzzle devices that I've shown on here. Yeah, my wife hates it because she films this and just blasts right in her face all the time. Insert whatever joke you want there, but it keeps the muzzle incredibly flat. This is a gamer rifle, now remember that. Key mod rail on here instead of M-Lock, but I have it all covered up because key mod isn't cool anymore. No, it's just to keep the heat away from my hand because I do a lot of round counts with this. The key mod M-Lock rail, uh, discussion to me is ridiculous. They both hold your accessories. They're both relatively the same. M-Lock is stronger than Keymod, yes, but if you have a Keymod rail, don't throw it in the trash and get an M-Lock rail. You're going to be fine. Uh, it also has a Cryptek Coatings bolt carry in it. Again, the whole low mass, uh, low gas system going backward. This has an improved buffer system in it with some sort of a rubber thing in here that I wish I knew off the top of my head. I've done a review in the past. Uh, maybe I'll put it in the description below. But that again, less weight, more spring, all that stuff's all tuned specifically designed for my particular ammo that I shoot. So it runs very, very flat when I shoot it. This has the uh, uh, badass uh, safety lever. So it's a bigger extended safety lever. A lot of guns that are at this price range run a 45 degree uh, swing safety. I personally don't like that. I know it's a little bit faster and I know that comes on most of the high-end rifles, but I don't like that. I like a measure of safety when it comes to my safety. I like to feel it and I like a, a measure of consistency with all my rifles. So I keep it with that. Also running a uh, Geisley two-stage trigger in it. A lot of people run souped up like I used to have a Geisley three-gun trigger in it and that makes you look really fast up close, but I noticed it was sacrificing a little bit of accuracy. Point being is that a rifle of this quality is going to have a tremendously amazing trigger in it, especially if you buy it's stock you buy like a cobalt kinetics let's say or, or something of that quality you're gonna get a lot a lot of really good triggers no matter what trigger it is timney uh ar gold whatever it's gonna be i'm also running a 1 to 8 optic on this right now i used to run a trigicon 1 to 4 i got this primary arms 1 to 8 that i've been running and that's pretty awesome also i really like a 1 to 8 scope because it basically gives you the opportunity at zero power, you can shoot just like a red dot, and at eight power, you can go all the way out to 600 yards. So this gives it this particular rifle, even though it's you know somewhere in the area of six pounds, it's incredibly reliable, incredibly fast, incredibly accurate, and it's capable from zero all the way to 600 meters. This is the most diverse 
uh, rifle that I have in my particular collection. And the good thing about a super expensive AR-15 that's done correctly with all the parts spec correctly, now I, I built this rifle myself and I've probably built about 50 AR-15s in the past and I've learned from my particular mistakes what parts to stay away from, what parts not to, how to mix things together, and I, that, that video would be hours and hours if I did that. But basically, if you get a really good high-end AR-15, whether you build it yourself or have somebody put it together and for your first time that's what I would absolutely recommend uh, you're still gonna get all the super high-end high-speed low drag stuff but you're gonna get it without sacrificing reliability because that's the most important thing doesn't matter how much your rifle weighs doesn't matter how accurate your rifle is as long as it functions correctly for almost every circumstance and if it starts to function kind of shitty but it is extremely accurate what does it matter because it doesn't work anyway so I just wanted to go over a quick demonstration here, and I know I ramble on a lot because I know a lot about AR-15s, and I, I like the gun, what can I say? And I just wanted to show some of the features. Some of the other features you're gonna get with a more expensive gun is gonna be a higher end charging handle as well. I've got a couple different ones on the table I'll talk about real fast. This is my one of my old standby favorites. This is a BCM Ambi. My wife's left-handed, she shoots all my AR-15s. She loves AR-15s also. Girls love AR-15s because they're easy to shoot and they're low recoil and they still do the job. Uh, the BCM is really nice, but what I'm really leaning towards the these days actually, especially for my suppressed guns, is gonna be this uh, Geisley charging handle here because it actually, uh, I don't know what they do, what kind of black magic they do in there, but they decrease the amount of gas that hits you in the face, whether it be suppressed or a short barreled rifle. So I actually have these on my 10.5 uh, Air 15 pistol build as well. So I hope I covered a few things. I'm sure I forgot some stuff because I this is just a video we did out here randomly. I don't have any notes or anything like that. But if you liked the video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. Also, remember to support me on Patreon. Uh, YouTube has basically demonetized my entire channel. So all the Patreon money goes to ammunition. It goes to guns for review. I don't keep any of it. All goes to the channel. I super appreciate that. I super appreciate your support. Thank you for watching. What is this baller ass recoil control you had? <laughs> I'll show you. <laughs>